Hey, good morning. Uh, my name is Jalendra Rijal. I'm an ITM advisor covering San Joaquin East Tennessee and Merced County. Um, so uh, today I'll be talking about some uh, uh, general interest on uh, what we need to do in dormant season. Um, and then we'll talk about some winter practices, winter centers, and enable winter issues. Uh, and then we'll talk about what we can do to manage, uh, you know, naval wounds, which is the biggest problem uh, in uh, in the street, especially with the new uh, like that. But before I go to uh, uh, to that, uh, how's uh, naval wounds and other other insect issues this year? So, uh, well, what I've seen, I'll, I'll share my experience. On uh, this year, um, you know, looking at uh, again, and everything. So, this particular is also one of the uh, big deal in some portion of uh, our county, Stanislaus County, and I think there are also issues of Neville Holmes, I mean, other counties of San Joaquin and Merced also. Uh, we have seen those uh, this year. And uh, my Obviously, it was a bigger issue later after the whole splitting or just during that time. So after that, we, we only saw the light from uh, during that time. Before, it was not a big deal, not a big issue. And so another the one thing that, uh, the good thing about my that I want to share is that later season, if we don't use the hydrogen or any other disruptive uh, insecticide, uh, lead, uh, six spotted trips really picked up and then controlled by, uh, to a greater extent. That's what I, I saw this example this year. Uh, we always hear that David Haviland down south talk about that. But uh, this year, one drawer in the county actually called me and he had a big problem. Uh, basically, significant issue with the weddings and everything. So he was thinking about spraying uh, my side, but he hold up for a while. And then he, he went back and then look at the trees and it's regaining the you know the leaves and uh, growth and, and the green. So and so and so because of that he said that and he looked at it and he six uh, six spotted trips all over his orchard. And so and he also mentioned to me that he has 300 acres and uh, he said I'm not going to use my for any of my rented property here because. He used the Entropic, uh, which is a software product, as you know, uh, this year, and then really that helped to that six spotted trips, which comes later in the season after all the split time, and then help my, uh, uh, you know, reduce the mic pressure. So that's just the uh, one success story that I wanted to share. Uh, but in terms of neighbor owns, obviously we know that it's a big neighborhood year across the valley. My understanding when I talk to the uh, uh, you know farm advisor and then IPM advisor of North and then also South um, and also when I talk to the hauler and then other PCAs and there has been the case that you know 20% damage in hauler place so that means that uh, you know you probably get in the field damage around 30% or even more. Uh, so, so that's the situation, and it's not every orchard has that problem, but majority of we uh, are having that problem, right, this year for the neighbor Um I, I had a couple of trials with the mating disruption and insecticide and other stuff. So what I've seen was, I see as low as 1.5% through 18% in my uh, evaluation out of the uh, around 80,000 knots that we cracked. Well, we still need to crack about 10,000 10, knots, but we're almost done. Um, so it's, it's very, so probably there are some other factors that we need to talk about. What is, what is the reason behind that? I'll come back uh, on that point later. Um, so let's talk about the dormant time um, uh, issues. So we have in the dormant season, what we do is that uh, we control the scale insect and some of the other mites, not the wave spining spider mites, but brown mites, European red mites, and also uh, peace tree borer, if that's the, that's the issue. Um, 
and also the lecanium if, if that's the issue. So these are the insects that we need to uh, control in the dorm dormant time if there is uh, basically need based on the sampling. So, so for university recommend to do the spore sampling anytime between November through uh, to the January, you go to the orchard and then collect at least 100 spurs from uh, 20 different trees, at least the 20 different trees, and then use your hand lens and look for the mite eggs. Uh, and also for the scale, you for the, look for the, the light scale on, on those spurs. of the uh, age or the life scale that you see, you basically count the number of spores that have infected. So, so in, in, in this very good you basically take out the 20 and then look through those 20 and then if you see four, if you see three out of 20, that's not the label that you see. So if you see four, that's the that's the label that you need to treat. That's a, that's a pressure. If you don't see uh, four, then you again grab another 40 and then make it 40 and then again do that. So that's, that's a recommended stuff. So if you see 20% uh, spur that has uh, mite eggs, then 20, less than 20% is not non-treated. So if you see more than 20%, just a well, um, four to, well, sometimes four to six, or six to eight um, uh, gallons of well in the sufficient amount of water would uh, take care of that. So sufficient amount of water is about 200 gallons. That's the recommendation. But there are also out there recommendations that if you have bigger trees and then taller trees, you even can go uh, 400 gallons uh, per acre. Uh, I know it sounds a lot, uh, but that's the university uh, recommendation based on the research and, and the work that are done. So that's for the mites, and for the scale, if we see 20%, less than 20% uh, infestation on those spur, then you don't do anything because that's, that's not the label that you need to create. If you see 20 to 60% of that um, infestation uh, on, on the scale, level is scale one only the narrow range of well should take care of that. You don't need to include the insecticide. If you have heavy population that means the more than sixty percent infestation, then you are looking at insecticide uh, well plus insecticide. So in this case we are talking about the insect growth regulator. We have available centaur and then seeds. These are the two insecticides that we use we recommend for that for um, so that's pretty much about dormant um, time treatment. And, and so if there is no reason um, to treat for the scale and the mites in the dormant time, so in that case for the beach tweet or if you see that a problem, then you, you will have plenty of time later in the season to treat the beach tweet for must, You must prefer in the May time or late April time or early May time. Um, so just for the beach tree form, just it, it's recommended not to use the dormant tree. Um, anything, any any question about dormant display? Dormant time? No. So now, now I I want to move to um, move on to the naval wounds and again come back to the naval wounds. So uh, this year we see that you know high damage, high infestation, naval wounds, not only in the home, uh, also I've seen initially in, in walnuts also the same thing, and you expect that because if you have high population in the in the almonds, then those population made second, third flight up to that infested on the in the almonds, and so walnuts sometimes get the, even the fourth flight. So you have you know and as you go the generation third and fourth, the number is exponential. So because of that, the walnut get more uh, never on zone than uh, almost. And so with the almost and walnut kind of surrounding so you, you expect that damage in walnut also. And 
so yeah, and so what are the reasons? So then that, that's the main thing, right? So why do we have seen this 20% damage this year? Um, one thing is that there can be the insect cycle that you see in other insects also. So I was talking to David about uh, uh, before before the meeting that you know it seems like there are five, six years, seven years cycle that uh, you see that huge population of never and then again drop down and, and come back after after five or six years. Um, and that's true for other insects also. That that happens in other insects also. That's the reason that you don't see that insect infestation, the same insect every year to the same level. But it's not, um, so uh, saying that it doesn't mean that the next year we won't have problems, right? So we may not have this level problem, or who knows, maybe that we have uh, other problems. That's one of the reasons, because this insect population, insect growth reproduction is, is highly varied based on, uh, depends on uh, whether uh, and many other different things, so host and surrounding environment, all, all that thing. Uh, but this year, another thing is that we did not do a uh, very good job on winter sanitation. Not only because we didn't want it, but I think it's mostly the because of the rain. But at the same time, we have a time window, you know, from any time from harvest through February 1 that we go and then check and do the winter sanitation and then remove those knots and then uh, from the water by the uh, So uh, in many cases, in, in central county, central county, in all these northern central king county, uh, the winter sanitation was very poor uh, in 2017. So that, that obviously contributed to the distance sanitation. And uh, another thing that not to mention is uh, the temperature this year, right? So we had uh, very high temperature late in the season, June, even across summer. And then we had 50 plus days with 100 plus temperature. So obviously with the higher temperature, the production rate is higher for the insects. So you see the generation closer and then you see the more population. So that's also contributed to that uh, potential. So these are the main two things. Um, so the weather we cannot control for sure, but for the winter sanitation, I think uh, we we definitely need to do a really good job on, on taking out of the water for next year. Um, you know, if, if we want to uh, control the neighbor wound zone next year. Um, insecticide is something that you know. I mean, Insecticide itself is not very effective in controlling neighbor wounds, no matter what, how many times you spray, because there is a, a there are insecticide. When you spray, no matter how you spray, the, the likelihood that insecticide is cover the whole uh, the, the orchard and the north, and then the larva gets contact into that insecticide is is small. So because of that, we need to use the insecticide, but it, it, the primary line of defense should be the winter sanitizer. Um, and if you see the this year population, all these larvae going into the, these mummy nuts and then coming back next year, that's another thing that we need to do winter sanitizer, right? Because more going and more coming. Um, uh, that's another thing uh, for the winter sanitizer. So I think, and so another thing that I want to share is um, for this area, we are talking about two mummies per tree. That's the recommended, recommended threshold that uh, of the mummies, you know, um, after uh, mid uh, months. So if we have two mummies per tree after mid March, you, you should be good. Um, so two mummies in tree, that means that when you look out on the trees and then look for the mummies, you, you don't basically see that. If you see some, then there is already, you know, more than two. Well, there was a saying, right? So when you look up on the, on the tree, and see five, well, and, and then estimate the, how many mummies probably there, and you see that 500, uh, uh, you know, mummies, and then you, you shake those trees, and then check out those, you know, all those mummies there, and then again look back and see, and how many mummies on the tree. And again, you see, well, about 500, and like that, because you don't see that many, even though you see the mummies on the trees, but it's very hard to estimate based on that. 
uh, because there's so many, you know, uh, big trees. Um, so yeah, so one, two mummies per per tree, and the winter sanitation is the key. I think it needs to be, uh, and so that not only help you, that will also, if everybody does it, it will help to reduce the population uh, down, and we'll, we hopefully we won't have uh, this kind of problem in coming years. I talked to the advisors there. Um, they mentioned that they are not having that much. I don't know clearly whether you know, I don't know that there is ways and whether that's 100% uh, true. But this person, this person that he said, well, we do the winter sanitation all the time. We have our only threshold level way down. Insecticide control um, is there. We need to spray insecticide, especially in the holly split time. Early season control in the May, May timing. It, if there is significant issue of the peach tree borer or the mites, then we'll, um, you know, during that time the insecticide is recommended and then also include the miticide. But uh, I see that the major insecticide use should be in the in the holly split time. Um, moving forward for the next year, um, I have a couple of courses that I'm doing the mating disruption trial with, uh, with uh, registered product and then also, uh, you know, still not registered product. So there are, uh, there are, there have been the cases that the, even the puffers, people mentioned that there are puffers even not working puffers in the, uh, so we, you know, the, uh, Area that people, people using it, but I think what is happening is that they are working, they work. Uh, there are many other things that we need to consider when you put the puffers, right? So mating disruption. So I'm now talking about what are the options that we can use uh, for next year. So, so mating disruption puffers. Um, so in one case, that what I found was I have one plot that has puffer in it, about 60 acres. And I have another plot next to it, it's about 120, does not have the meeting structure. And then when I, uh, I collected the knot from the sample, I collected from the middle, and I collected all from the border knots. And so in the middle, I see the damage three, three to four percent. I mean, this year, three to four percent, um, you know, in a, in a sample that we evaluated, it's, it's based on the, what I'm seeing. It's, not that high. Um, versus I also collected from the borders and then on the borders I see 10-12% damage on the border of sample. So what do you all mix that together? 5-6%, right? So that, that's the reason that uh, we kind of uh, think that well, buffer is also not working this year. Um, and also the other also uh, other thing is that when we use the mating disruption product, uh, definitely we need to consider those things. The border um, infestation in neighbor orchard, um, and if we if we need to do the border spread, then we need to do that too. And also, I think I also don't think that we're in a stage that will just depend on the buffer. We still need to have our insecticide plan, um, and then and then use that also in conjunction with the buffers. And hopefully in a few years, three, four, five years, if we all use puffers, or majority of we all use the puffers and then do, do the winter sentence and the population is to go down, 
And during that time, hopefully we'll, we'll uh, need to use that bucket. But I think for the time being, uh, insecticide also need to be a part of the, the whole uh, risk management. Um, so, so how, well, the so one thing I want to talk to you about how bucket works, right? Um, so I have some of the sample here. I'll show you if you have not seen before. So we have three products now with the different companies, but the principle is the same thing. So this is one company product, so it has a type of thing here. So fair morning, every 15 minutes or so in the night time, based on the you know, program time. So lots uh, cool. Also came up with different one, but its principle is the same thing, right? So it's all the same. And um, how it works? So these are the parallel based problems. So, um, so there are two, two ways that buffer works. In when we are in the season, and it pops the pheromone to the water, the add pheromone saturates the water, and so because of that. find the female because of the desensitized the water that will desensitize their ability to find the find the female. So that that's how this works. So if we saturate the water with the pheromone, with the artificial pheromone, uh, the male will no longer able to find the female. But think about this. If we have uh, pressure, if we have the population very high, even the chances during that case, the male finding the female is high, right? So because of the high population. That's the reason that the buffer works best under mild to low, moderate, moderate to uh, low population level. Uh, and so another thing, the consideration to put the buffer is that you need to put them before the beginning of the before the uh, male uh, adults start flying, and so I'm talking about uh, March, right? during that time, this March, or at least by the first week, or by the by end of March, that we should have our buffer out in the field, and then they start working, so that you start reducing the public right there, so the first week flying. Uh, because there are some confusion that the people uh, ask whether I can use buffer in June uh, and, and that 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 thing. And yeah, you can use it, but it is the best uh, to use from the beginning. And then it, these buffers are, they say that, at least they say that, to carry throughout the season, even though if you started in, in mid March and in the April time, before the first flight. You know. So, um, I think uh, another thing that I, I should uh, mention is that if you think that the buffer, we can use the mating disruption and buffer, and then don't need to do the same intersentism, uh, that is not true. So the main thing is that if you if you can't afford, if you don't want to use mating disruption, don't use it. But the, the winter sanitation or the mommy sanitation is the because there, there are many, and, and also it has the cost also it has, right? So you have winter sanitation um, cost and cost, you have cost. So why, I, I have to invest by like many more, but I think if you need to choose where you want to go, definitely I would recommend to go to winter sanitation. You can say it again, and explain that the best one best under moderate to low Thank you. 
Thank you. 